everybody, it's Senra and today we're going to talk about some tips and tricks for making your very own cosplay music videos. I have been making cosplay music videos since about 2011, so 10 years now, oh my gosh I'm old. For those of you who are already on TikTok doing amazing cosplay content, who've already taken one step down the road to making your own cosplay music videos. I'll be breaking down all the things that go into making a cosplay music video into three categories, which are, of course, pre-production, production, and post-production. Just a quick side note that if you are hoping to make money off cosplay music videos on YouTube, it's probably not going to really happen in that regard because you can't exactly monetize a video with music that you do not own. Any content that uses royalty-free music, of course, you can monetize. Plus, if you do a whole song cover from scratch, which a lot of amazing creators do on YouTube, more likely than not, that is the safest way, besides royalty-free music, to be able to monetize that content. Cosplay music videos have definitely been more of a passion project sort of thing for me in the past. I do hope to do some proper full covers, including instrumentals in the future. Uh, the video I'm working on currently is from Pandora Hearts, and I'm using the song Every Time You Kissed Me. I will be singing the vocals for that, but I will be using a pre-recorded track, and so I can't monetize it. If you're considering making your own CMVs, you might be kind of stuck with the very crucial bit of what's a good idea or what songs will work best for my characters. Getting inspiration sometimes can be super tricky or it can happen really organically. Sometimes the best inspiration can come from reviewing your source material. For beginners, often it's easier to actually work with the music, say from the anime, such as the opening or ending songs. Or it could just be your favorite current pop song and you imagine that so-and-so would be great lip syncing to it. Again, CMVs do not have to be sensical, uh, they can just be for you for fun. If you're really, really stuck, I highly recommend Googling CMV for the series that you're cosplaying from. So you can have a look online to see what other cosplayers have done already. This is also super handy to do, just in case the idea that you've already come up with has already been done by someone else. I'm not saying that you can't do the same song as someone else in your your music video but it is just nice to double check anyway and to make sure that your ideas aren't going to be too similar because you know the cosplay community we can get pretty protective and pretty obsessive about our ideas if you are paying tribute to someone else's video that's okay as long as you credit the original person in your description and in the credit I did a video many years ago as Levi from Attack on Titan lip-syncing to uh, for your entertainment by Adam Lambert. I was parodying directly a video from Jack of Palais Productions back then. I'm talking about direct parody in terms of the cuts are the same, the effects were the same as best as I could copy. I very much made mention that I was parodying someone else's video and that was a present for a friend at the time. So that's totally okay and that's within the bounds of fair use, but again, just be respectful to the other creators online and what they've already accomplished or done and go from there. I definitely recommend looking on TikTok to see what people have done with your cosplay character in terms of what sounds they've used. They may have only used 15 seconds of a song but you could imagine a whole feature length version of that song being used in a film and do your own thing with that character. Other ways to find ideas for a cosplay music video is to go to other fan created content such as doujinshis or fanfiction. You can see an example of this very situation of turning a doujin to a CMV in the CMV on my channel, which is called The Hero and the Magician for a Hatalia Harry Potter crossover. Sometimes you won't actually have an idea of what you want your video to be until you've made it. What I mean by this is you just get together with a group of friends or you just put on your own costume and just think, what can I do with this in this moment? There have been videos I've made in the past where my friends just had a gathering of the same cosplay and we just got together and just filmed a whole lot of random scenes in character which I then compiled into a video later on. Doing a lip sync based cosplay music video is often the easiest or the simplest way to get started. Having a lip sync in your music videos is really useful particularly for filling up space. We'll talk about that more in the editing process but doing a lip sync in character for your music video if that's appropriate is a really really good idea. Sometimes you can plan as far of course as making full on trilogies out of cosplay music music videos or duologies if you will. You can see this with the two videos from the Hitalia fandom that I did which are actually sort of the ones I'm most proud of just from the concept and how long they took to make which was my Queen Elizabeth and England Hitalia videos. So you have your concept or at least the start of a concept. 
you figured out what characters you want to cosplay, and now it's time to get really organized in thinking about how you're gonna go about making this film. You don't have to be super knowledgeable about filmmaking to make a really good CMV in terms of you don't have to have studied it in film school. Uh, it does help to really pay attention in the movies that you really like, what the camera is doing as a storytelling device, how they're achieving it, and exploring the concepts of, you know, mid shot, long shot, close ups, um, detail shots. These are sort of things that should start to become more regular in your vocabulary when you're thinking about expressing yourself through film. Blocking or choreography are something to really think about in the planning process. The way I usually go about blocking and designing my cosplay music video is to actually get the lyrics of the song that I'll be using and put them in a Word document and then create little text boxes next to the words with ideas of shots or the sort of angles I want to achieve or things that I think will be really good in that scene. Another way to do this is just to write down lists of scenes and ideas of what you want to get on filming day. So what sort of scenarios you want the characters in. So so-and-so arguing, so-and-so running away, so and so doing this, just so you have a really more of a concrete idea of what you're going to do when the cameras are rolling. If you are more capable as a visual artist than I am, perhaps storyboarding would be the best way to organize your thoughts. And always putting down a little cheeky timestamp is really useful while you're listening to your song and organizing your thoughts because that'll be super helpful when you go back to actually line up your shots in the editing room. And what you write down when you're blocking out your video will not necessarily be what you film on the day and a lot of making a cosplay music video is about compromise and being very flexible. Location, location, location. Is this a video that you're going to just film on a tripod at home with the backdrop? Experimenting at home is actually probably a really good idea in the beginning, particularly when you're getting used to using your camera. If you're fortunate, you may know someone or have a friend of a friend who actually has their own studio space where you can put up your own backdrops and set and film in that enclosed space. If you are planning on shooting outdoors, here's a couple of things I really want you to remember. Number one, you can't count on the weather to be perfect, so make sure you have a rainy day plan or you have time in your shooting schedule to reshoot or come back another day. Another thing about filming outdoors is don't do something in a costume that you wouldn't feel comfortable doing in public in normal clothing. This is an outdoor space where people will see you from the public who will have absolutely no clue what you're doing. And that's enough to deal with usually, particularly the first go around, uh, to begin with anyway. If you're filming in a public space, uh, which often we end up doing, be very much aware of the people around you. Not so much for them giving you funny looks, but actually because you're all sharing a public space and it's really, really, really important that you don't disturb the public, you're not being too loud or too boisterous. For yourself and also for other cosplayers who may want to use that same space later on, uh, it's nice that you haven't, you know, given cosplayers a bad reputation by being loud and screaming and running around and being ridiculous. Researching locations that could be perfect for your video, you have to really be careful about where you're actually allowed to film. There are a lot of places which are more than happy for you to film in their exterior venues, so you're more likely to be able to film outside of a church than inside of one. Universities are more than happy for you to use their grounds if you're filming something that isn't for commercial gain. Uh, for example, most of my videos that require a period setting are filmed at the University of Sydney Quadrangle. If you're a student at that university, for example, that you want to shoot at, you may be able to get access to rooms that other people can't. But usually the exterior spaces are fair game. Another really cool idea for locations for shoots is to research if you have any living museums in your area. These places are amazing. They are great sets and backdrops for shoots. Uh, we have this beautiful place called Elizabeth Bay House. I haven't actually used it for a cosplay music video yet, but we did use it for our backdrop uh, at WCS in 2017 for our Pandora Hearts skit. Another option for Sydney size is of course our Maritime Museum where we have these beautiful boats. If you're worried about access to a location or if you're allowed to film there, it's always a good idea to look up that location online or to give them a call and ask permission. Better to ask permission than forgiveness because you don't want to just rock up to a place and then be told you can't be here after you put all the effort into planning your shots and your costume and your makeup and everything because that, that would suck. When you're also considering your locations, consider what time of day is going to be best for the lighting. I highly recommend shooting either really early in the morning or afternoon. 
If you're filming indoors, lighting shouldn't be an issue if you've actually invested in a couple of lights and you can get some pretty affordable soft boxes and ring lights off eBay, Amazon or other light stores. Equipment that you will definitely need for filming your cosplay music video is a camera. The camera I'm using currently for this video is my Sony Handycam camera and it films in 10 HD. Uh, it slows down beautifully if I want to do some slow motion things. Uh, it's not quite the frame rates levels of an SLR, but again, it's much more affordable than buying a big fancy camera. I of course do use a big fancy camera, which is very worth the investment for me as a regular content creator, uh, which was a Panasonic GH5. And that creates some beautiful scenes, particularly in the really slow motion, high frame rate settings. I recommend getting a tripod because they're fantastic to make sure you always have a clean, steady shot if you're filming outside. If the video is going to include more than yourself in cosplay, you want multiple characters, you have to cast them. And usually that will come from your friendship pool or friends of friends. And it's really important that while you're working with other people to always make sure they're really comfortable with what is happening on set. In your film, for example, if you're planning a great horror scene with fake blood everywhere, you really wanna make sure that you or the person you're working with is okay with getting fake blood all over their costume or their wig. Please get proper stage blood that can be washed out instead of making your own with dye because good luck, hun, that's probably not gonna come out of your clothing. Uh, luckily, when I filmed my Bad Romance Lestat music video, I knew for a fact that fake blood from Ben Nye, I believe, would come out of my white shirt and my wig because we kind of went crazy and it was really fun to do. So you're heading towards the day of filming or the first day of filming your cosplay music video. It's really important to think about the preparation that you need to go into ahead of time. So the night before your shoot, make sure to make a concise list of everything that you need. Um, also make sure that you are thinking about basic things like food and water for yourself and that also for your crew. If your friends are giving you their free time to assist you on your project, it's really nice to shout them lunch or snacks at least. So just looking after your friends who are there helping you is really appreciated. If you're planning on using props for your shoot at all, uh, if they are weapons, please make sure that they are okay to have at the location that you're filming at. You also need to make sure you know how exactly you're getting to your locations if you're filming at location and I highly recommend getting a little wheelie suitcase so that you don't have to lug a lot of things around. Uh, certain costumes you may be able to wear from home to set, other costumes you may have to put on there. When shooting anything to do with my Pandora Hearts character Lacey, I have to take that costume with me in a suitcase because it is too big to wear in a car and to fit through most doorways. <laughs> Alrighty, so you guys are ready to shoot. How exciting. Uh, you're all set up, you're ready to go, you've got everything on. So here are just some quick things to remember. Number one, of course, is safety. Safety is really important on set at all times. So please look after each other. Please look after your equipment. I love shooting in outdoor settings. I'm actually legally blind. So for me to shoot outdoors means, you know, being very, very aware of tree roots and holes in the ground and all that sort of thing. So it's really good for me to have friends on set who are very aware of my limitations visually and can assist me in making sure that if I'm doing a running shot, I'm not going to stack it. In my current CMV that I'm doing for Pandora Hearts, we filmed already the first part of it in studio. So we set up this massive gold bird cage and we did everything indoors, which was great. So we had an air con and I was comfortable in my costume. Another good thing to do on location throughout filming is to spot check each other. By spot check, I mean you guys are paying attention to little details. You're paying attention to your friend's makeup, your friend's wigs, your costume. Does everything look okay at all times? Is the wig sliding backwards? Because it'd be really, really terrible to go back through some footage and be like, oh God, my hair was showing or my contour wasn't blended or my costume was wrong in this spot. So if you guys can just be mates to each other and be really, really helpful, that would be fantastic. If you haven't had the opportunity to visit the set that you're filming at before, the shots that you've already written down may not exactly line up to what you're being presented with. So definitely make sure to have fun and improvise. Often as well, you'll come up with really fun new ideas on the spot, which is great. So remember, more is more when it comes to actually getting footage, not less. Get as much as you can on the day, particularly at outdoor location shoots or with a large group of people. Get your plan stuff done, then get extra things done. By extra, I mean get extra lip syncs, extra takes of certain shots, um, whole new scenes that you come up with on the fly. Uh, 
make sure that you are covering your bases. I always recommend getting multiple takes of something, particularly a lip sync, because you want to make sure that it's in focus, that you have options to pick from. Maybe someone's facial expression or reaction was better in the first or second take. If you're switching between different frame rates, please double check between takes so you've swapped back to the right one, otherwise you'll be in a bit of a pickle. Pro tip for people who are shooting period style costumes, be really aware of your surrounding because even though most of the backdrop may look period accurate or really suit your vibe, if there are giant signs that are very modern or people in fluoro outfits who are being tourists, um, yeah, be really careful not to get them in your shot. If you're brand new to filming and you want to do more than just using a tripod, just get out there and experiment. Uh, close up shots of faces, getting certain gestures like hand clasping close up, um, reaching, eyes moving, lots and lots of little detail shots are great fillers, particularly when you realize, oh, I've got a bit of a space here. Highlight your costume, highlight details in the wig, highlight the way that it moves. Movement shots are excellent. Practice working with fun, twisty angles. You don't want to make the person who's watching it seasick, but you do want to make them feel like they're sort of involved in the action. But the biggest takeaway is that from your very first film to your very latest, you will definitely get better. Uh, you will definitely improve in all aspects of this. So don't stress if you feel really unsure of yourself at the beginning because we all did and it's just a learning curve. Your eye for filming will get better, your eye for the camera. It'll just, it'll, it'll work itself out. Just practice, practice, practice and experiment. If you are in charge of making this film as well, remember that you have a goal in mind for creating this thing and although you'll have days where you're just having fun, derping around with your friends, having a good time, being silly, if you really, really want to get something done, you will learn how to use a director voice. My friends know exactly what I'm talking about when I put on my director voice, uh, because it means I'm basically saying, please shut up, you need to pay attention, we need to get this done. While on location, one other thing I highly recommend, or while on set, is to actually make it a two for one. So do your CMV filming, but also take some fabulous photos for your Instagram. We did a wonderful photo shoot for my Pandora Hearts video on location at my cage set. Uh, it was really great working with my fabulous photographer Thomas and getting some brilliant shots which I can use later on. So yes, always think about how can I benefit the most from this situation. Now we are heading to the cutting room floor. A lot of computers often come with their own software or they have a very cheap or free one to download so it's iMovie. Um, for Apple and that's where a lot of us did start making CMVs was on iMovie. I have now moved on to using Final Cut Pro 10 which has been around for years now. I'm sure there's a newer version out there but I really really enjoy the layout of it. I also enjoyed the fact that I could buy it outright. But Adobe is fantastic because you can also get After Effects. So Final Cut Pro does have some special effects software but it's not as good as the particle generator stuff you can work with on After Effects and that is great for magic spells, mist, smoke. So if you're really thinking about going to that kind of realm of things, that would be worth the investment. I know you can download these things probably illegally. Uh, that is totally up to you. If you want to do that, I'm not your mother. So you've got your software, you've imported all your footage and it's ready to cut. Now, you remember at the very beginning I mentioned time stamping your storyboards or time stamping your blocking? This is when it's really helpful because you can actually look at the song as a whole and go, this is where I really wanted these things. Look through your footage and find the clips that you wanted and line them up. Once they're all lined up, you can then start chopping them down and finding those really poignant and nuanced moments that you actually want to use. Uh, if I'm doing a music video with a lip sync, I usually get that sorted first. So I drop any clips with me lip syncing into the timeline of my video and I line it up perfectly. You really want to get that bit tight because a off lip sync just looks strange. When the audio is out of sync with the person talking, it's very discombobulating and I, just, I don't like it and people will notice. On the day when you're filming your video with a lip sync, it's really important to have the audio playing out loud so that when you get back to actually editing in the editing room, the camera has picked up on the audio of the song. You can make sure that the audio in the video lines up perfectly with the audio uh, actually in your track that you're editing to. Basically, editing a video should roughly take approximately twice as long as it took to film. So if you spent two hours filming the video, you're going to take four hours editing it. So you can imagine that if you've been filming something over multiple days, you're going to be editing for a while. Uh, that's really important to think about if you've set yourself a deadline for a competition or you've set yourself a personal deadline. 
My number one rule is never, ever, ever repeat footage. If you look at your song length and realize you don't have enough footage to fill that in in a nice, concise way, cut down the song. Rather than repeating footage that you've already used so far in your editing process. And it just becomes boring if people repeat over and over the same clips. If you have a story to tell and you really want to tell it, uh, there's no harm dropping in a instrumental part of the track. In my uh, A Thousand Years Queen Elizabeth I England Tatalia period video, I realized that I didn't have enough music. So I actually went from the original song by Christina Perry and incorporated the Piano Guys version of the same track to create more of a lengthy cinematic experience. Something I really like to emphasize in editing videos is the 10 second rule. This is really, really simple. Basically, if you're editing a video that's five minutes long, no clip should be longer than 10 seconds. If you weren't fortunate enough to notice someone walking into your shot or being in the background, play around with the cropping tools. There's great ways to cut out people who just made it into your background. Uh, play around with zoom effects and editing. But please, 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 unless it's a stylistic choice and it fits the song, don't overdo the edits of special effects. It's like watching a really terrible uh, PowerPoint presentation where they've used every single transition imaginable with no real taste level or stylistic decisions behind that choice. And it just looks messy and it's uncomfortable to watch. Um, but if you are going to use lots of special effects and it makes sense, Add a warning at the beginning of your video to say this video may contain flashing effects so that those who may be susceptible to any type of seizure or fit can avoid it. Another thing that's really important in filming, particularly outdoors, is to consider color correction. Now this is kind of a step further into the more complicated uh, aspects of filming and editing. Color correction basically means that perhaps you're filming at a particular time of day and all white looks blue. Actually go into your color corrections within your editing software and either add a preset filter or go ahead and actually alter the temperature settings and basically edit the exposure, the temperature, the saturation so it actually starts to look more like it would have been real life. You can even go and add filters if you want to create a certain atmosphere, such as like sepia modes for a period piece, uh, but be careful not to overdo those because it can look a bit kitschy, but if it works for what you're going for, go right ahead. In Dear Future Husband, because the opening music sounded like a scratchy record, I edited the film with a bit of a retro filter so it looked like it fit the sound. Then just play around with it, see what works. When you get to the editing as well, you want to make sure that what you're showing makes sense. If it doesn't make sense without reading a lengthy description, then it's not going to really work for someone outside of the fandom. Maybe that's okay. Maybe it's okay for the video you're making to only be appreciated by the fandom, but it's really nice if someone stumbles upon your channel to watch your video and understand, okay, I don't get where these characters are from, but this is a really clear story and I understand it. Having people to view your videos before you post them onto YouTube is really, really helpful. When I was actually editing the A Thousand Years uh, Elizabethan video, I had lots and lots of different versions and I showed it to many different people until I got to the final cut where I was like, does this make sense? And they said yes. And I'm like, great. Because like with any piece of art, it may make sense to you, but if it doesn't make sense to your audience, it can get a little bit lost in translation and you may miss an opportunity for someone to appreciate your hard work. Always prepare to re-edit. One of my favorite things that one of my lecturers said at university was don't be afraid to kill your darlings. To kill your darlings means get rid of something that you really care about. So you may really have loved that particular scene, but if it doesn't work or if it didn't work out well, just delete it. But that is pretty much it from me as far as I have time for today. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that this inspires you to go out there and just film something. Uh, whether it's in a full cosplay, a closet cosplay, there's no wrong way to make these. It's just a really fun way of expression in the cosplay community. Uh, there are so many videos I'd recommend to you to watch. Vendetta Cosplay did some beautiful films. They were mostly Hitalia, but again, they had this cinematic quality that I really wanted to strive for in my work. There's another group that I'd definitely love to recommend. I'm gonna pronounce this name completely wrong. I am so sorry. Their name is Rinta Matsunta, Zunta, I'm gonna put it here. But their music video for Yuri and I's Party Like a Russian is one of my absolute favorite things I've ever seen on the internet. Anyway, if you guys like to follow me on my Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter and all those good things, my name is Senra Arya. It has been a pleasure chatting to you. 
Thank you so much for having me, guys. Bye-bye.